the best things about the cooler times of the year? Is it the fall colors? Yes. No. Is it the apple picking? No. The onions? No. Layers. Exactly. It's layering season. And just as ogres have layers and onions have layers, it's time for us to layer as well. Layering is the best because it can add so much dimension to your outfit. And it's a chance to actually add more colors, patterns, and textures to your outfit. The likelihood of it being more unique and interesting increases dramatically when you layer. But there may be a roadblock to a lot of us who wish to layer, and that's because we don't know how to. Dog, because layering is a skill, and you can't just plop on a bunch of clothes together and expect it to look good. I promise you I have never looked and felt this great ever before. There is a science behind it. Dog! I'm Levi Peters, and this is Demetrius Levi, and today I'm going to teach you how to layer. Dog! Okay, that's it. Forget it, dog. Just ignore me. Ignore me, dog. Go! You dense, irritating, miniature beast of burden! Anyway, actually, I'm going to give this over to my good friend, Harry Tortellini. Harry? Thank you, Dimitri. Hello, my name is Harry Tortellini. Tortellini! And I've spent one semester in accounting at SC4 County Community College. I am currently single and unemployed. So, you want to start layering, but it's no easy task. So, you know what we're going to do? We're gonna start with the basics first. So, if you've worn a suit before, you've already layered. If you've worn a coat, which I'm pretty sure you have, you have used layers. Let's look at the key factors in the jacket and the shirts underneath. Out. A key factor that should help you in layering is that the more buttons there are, the more interior the layer. The less buttons there are, the more exterior the layer. Are you following me on this? Good, let's keep going. So, what shirt has the most buttons on it? A suit? No! No, a dress shirt. So, that's gonna be our first layer. Okay, so a cardigan or a vest has quite a lot of buttons, but not as much as a dress shirt. So would that go under the dress shirt? No! No, it would go over the dress shirt. Boom, we've layered. So let's see this in action. Other than Shrek, Dimitri. Thank you, Harry. So this is one way to layer, but we can go even further than this. What can we do? We can add another layer. We can add another layer to this. So what has less buttons than a vest or a cardigan? Yes, a suit jacket. So let's add that on top. Bam. Great. So now we have a multi-dimensional fiber woven protection unit, a layered outfit. Now the button rule does not apply to this final layer that you can add depending on how cold it is. And that is a coat or another jacket. Add that on top. Thanks, Harry. Now, if there's no buttons at all, like in a t-shirt or on a sweater, this can be the innermost layer, like this look right here. But this is not always the case because one of the easiest and best ways, in my opinion, to layer something simply is like this look right here with a lightweight sweater over a dress shirt. It's a classic look and it always looks nice, in my opinion. And for some reason, I don't know why, it always gave me Harry Potter vibes. All right. Do you really have the, the, the what? The scar. Oh. No! Another key thing to note is that in more traditional styles of layering, the longer layers go on the outside, while the shorter the layer, the more interior it is. So for example, the t-shirt or the undershirt would obviously be the shortest, it'd be on the inside, and then it would get longer, like a suit jacket, and then an overcoat. But in streetwear, it's completely the opposite, in urban style streetwear, and usually the innermost layer is the longest. So they'll have a long line t-shirt with a shorter flannel with an even shorter like leather jacket. So just know that it's opposite depending on what style you're going for. But feel free to experiment and mix it up yourself. Okay, it's my turn. Now, a very important thing to remember also is onions. No patterns. If you're going to have a bold pattern and you're going to have another pattern with that, make sure it's very, very subtle like a glen plaid or a very fine stripe. You can have squares on squares or stripes on stripes, but in this case, size matters. That's what she said. They need to be different sizes so that you can easily differentiate them between the garments. So this and not this. This, not this. Thank you, Harry. 
Now, when it comes to colors, I'd start with something a little more monochromatic because using multiple colors can be quite advanced. And this is an intermediate style course after all. So we will learn about that stuff, but not yet. But not yet. Not yet. But if you are going to use color, just know that pretty much everything goes with black, white, and in the middle, gray, for the most part. But if you are going to use two actual colors, just make sure they're either complementary or analogous, analogous, an, uh, hold on. Analogous. Analogous. Analogous colors are the colors next to each other on a color wheel. So for example, you'll have blue and cyan, cyan, yeah, that's a, oh my gosh, or red and orange. While complementary colors are the exact opposite on the color wheel. So for example, blue and orange or red and green. Start with those and you'll be good to go. But I will say to make it easier, start out with a little more desaturated colors and a little bit more earthy tones. It's probably a lot easier than if you're using really bright, vivid, saturated colors. That can be very hard to pull off, even for pros, depending on what style you're going for. You don't want to look like a clown. <laughs> oh, and just something I wanted to say is that gray and yellow look really good together. I know sometimes you can think of like construction or something like that, that's what I used to think of, but it can actually look really, really cool and make the yellow pop. So that's something to try out. This is the first episode in the Style Intermediate course. You can watch the beginner style course right here if you haven't already, and I recommend that you do because I cover all the basics there. If you like this video, leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And also hit that bell notification so that you'll be notified the next time I drop a video. But before I leave though, I just want to know in the comment section down below, let me know what, Kitty, can you be quiet for a second? I already had to deal with the dog. I don't want to deal with you either. And especially useless, pathetic, annoying, talking donkeys. Lucky for me, I don't have a donkey. Um, just let me know in the comment section down below how you like to layer and what style you prefer to do. Mine is this look right here because it's super easy and it always looks nice. But I want to know how you guys do it because as you all know, this is a group thing and we are a family and we're in this together. All right, I'll see you guys next week. Adios. So, huh, you guys get your weekly dose of Greek lessons. So, Kalimera means good day, and Kalinichta means good night. So there you go. I'll see you all next week. Thank you. And remember, no, we don't write your assignment you in the here. comments. No, You're I done. will be it's grading over. those. Goodbye. End of story. Bye-bye. See you later.